my name is Keegan. Uh, I'm part of a project called True Nature, which is an acoustic music project trying to raise awareness about animal exploitation issues. Rescued is an organization that started uh, this past year. I'm one of the co-founders of it. And it's a farm animal advocacy group. Um, and the focus is on animal liberation. There's a lot of farm animal advocacy groups out there that focus on animal welfare, like creating bigger cages, or even animal rights, which we'll talk about bigger cages or how animals should be treated. Um, where Rescue stands different is that we're talking about ending animal slavery. Um, we don't want bigger cages, we want to get rid of cages. We want to really see the end of animals being viewed as commodities. Um, animals are living creatures with desires of their own, and we believe that they should be respected. Um, and ultimately, they're their own beings. They shouldn't ever belong to anyone. They're not property. So it's a, a little bit of a difficult organization to try and raise funding for because it's pretty radical, very much no compromise. We do investigative videos, um, literature, and then open rescues. And so True Nature is uh, the sale of merchandise goes it all benefits rescues work uh, because it is very expensive to do investigations and literature and rescues because uh, these are a lot of sick animals. They need a lot of um, veterinary care and of course to house and feed them. It's tremendously expensive. So if anyone's interested to check out the website, it's the easiest way to find out more information, which is just rescuedanimals.org. And uh, what is uh, Open Rescue? Uh, open Rescue is rescuing animals um, and not hiding your identity. There's a lot of, um, in the animal liberation movement, a lot of people hiding their identity um, because in a lot of places it's highly illegal, um, if not viewed as a terrorist activity, to save animals' lives. The thought of saving someone's life as being illegal seems pretty contrary to the ideas of freedom and living in a free country. Um, but unfortunately, these are large, uh, these are massive industries who have invested interest in keeping themselves in business. So with an open rescue, we don't hide our identities. Um, we're very open about where the animals came from. Um, to try to break down this idea that animal activism and animal liberation is a illegal tactic or that it's something to fear. No matter what form of oppression you're fighting against, whether it's human or earth or animal, um, and whether it's factions of the human species, and whether you're fighting against homophobia or racism or nationalism, um, just put yourself in the place of those who are being abused or those who are being oppressed, and then ask yourself, what, what would you want? Um, and when it comes to the sake of animals that are being abused, I wouldn't want someone to make a bigger cage for me. I'd want someone to get me out. Uh, by whatever means necessary. Um, I'm not an advocate for people breaking the law. I'm not telling people they should break the law. Um, but I do think it's honorable when someone acts out of their heart on what they think is what is right uh, and what is just. And if people are willing to risk their own freedom for that, I think it says that much more about their action. The simple fact that 80% of the world's grain is fed to non-human animals um, in a world where there are 30,000 children are starving to death um, every day, that seems completely unacceptable, that we would feed perfectly edible food to another species so we can eat their flesh. Um, environmentally, the animal agriculture is the world's largest destructive force. Um, no other industry even comes close. If the amount of resources that animal agriculture uses is more than every other industry in the world combined. Um, and the thought to create a product as needless and as destructive as meat, what it does to our bodies, is completely unacceptable. Of course, and then there's just the animals, you know, th their interest again is to survive and not to be killed. When I look at all the world's problems, no matter what they are, um, they're all made worse by an increase in human population. Um, if we're against animal abuse, if we're against, you know, class, you know, the injustice in class struggle, um, Again, the more people that are on this planet, the worse off every situation is. Um, and I feel really strongly about that to the point that I had myself sterilized to prevent myself from ever having biological children, which I think is a radical step. Um, but we live in pretty radical times and it's pretty extreme times. And again, when you look at the amount of children who are starving to death alone, I can't justify ever bringing kids into this world until every kid has been fed. 
Um, the you know, of course, ecologically too. The the free condoms thing is a way of life. one actually advocating for people to take proper birth control measures, but it's also as a political statement to say, hey, if we're serious about trying to save the environment, you know, the, one of the biggest things we can do is to not have children. I became straight edge because I didn't want to poison my body. Um, growing up, watching a lot of kids you know, drink themselves to be unconscious and, you know, hurt themselves. I didn't want to be part of that anymore. Um, and I found out about the straight edge movement and I thought something powerful that you could be part of something strong um, and not use drugs. That built into solidarity with um, victims of drug users. The drug industries like alcohol push these products on our communities because they want to make money. They don't care that it is the 80% of reported rapes are committed by someone under the influence of alcohol. They don't care that the vast majority of violent crimes committed in the world are committed by someone under the influence of alcohol outside of war. Um, they're completely immoral corporations that produce these products and market them to you know, kids and to adults. As far as damaging to activist communities, yes I do. I think it, it is a, a damaging thing. It's, alcohol is pushed on us um, in, in every aspect of our lives because it's a distractor. You know, if you have a bad day at work, you come home and you could drink and you forget about your bad day. And we shouldn't be forgetting about our bad days. We shouldn't be forgetting about being upset and being angry or being happy. We should, we should live our lives and be actively engaged in them rather than passively engaging in them. Um, there's a lot of activists who drink who are very active and they're very productive. It's just sad for me to see because activism can be very challenging. It can pull a lot of energy out of you. Um, it seems like the last thing we should be doing is poisoning our bodies and supporting immoral corporations like alcohol industry. What uh, do you see could be alternative uh, to uh, you know, uh, having fun uh, right. like, uh, without uh, alcohol? How you can do, like, uh, could you tell those ideas? What you just sure. Um, I mean, music is a great one and a lot of people at the show tonight weren't drinking um, and I think had a good time. You know. I haven't drank in a very long time, and I still have a good time. Um, anything creative, really. Anything that's going to feed, you know, a desire in yourself. Um, anything that's going to be productive and not destructive. Um, anything that we can do that is not going to hurt someone else. And so, I mean, any sort of activity, skateboarding, biking, you know, walking, running, swimming, singing, I mean, any sort of art. Um, again, anything that's going to be actively engaging in your life. There's too much passive activity and you know people you know watch movies, Hollywood movies and it's just it's passively engaging or you know play video games all day long and, and that to me is very, very much like using drugs because you're not engaging in your life. Um, and you know anything in my opinion that distracts us, pacifies or subdues us is, is a drug um, and should really be avoided. Sometimes I struggle with uh -huh. the motivation, but what it is for me is there's a lot of hopelessness in activism. It's very easy to get discouraged or burnt out. Um, but there's a story that I pretty much based my life on, and that's a young boy, and he's walking down the beach, and the tide's out, and there's sea stars and sea urchins and other small creatures that are stuck on the beach and stuck in rocks, and they're all dying because the water's going out and there's thousands of them. And he can't do any, you know, he, he sees this and he starts grabbing them and he's throwing them into the ocean, picking them up and taking them to the ocean. And he's rushing as fast as he can. And an old man walks along and sees him doing this and says, what are you doing? You know, what, you can't save them all. I mean, look, there's, there's thousands of them. You know, what's the point? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And he says, it matters to this one. He picks up another one, he says, it matters to this one. Um, for me, that's how I get motivation, is that I don't know how much of an impact, you know, true nature is having. I do know that what kind of impact rescue is having, because when you actually save an animal's life, you know for a fact that it matters to this one. Um, there's so much suffering in this world that is completely unavoidable, but there's a tremendous amount of suffering that is avoidable, that we can actually stop. Animal agriculture is one of those things that produces a tremendous amount of suffering that we can stop. Um, and so I have this burning desire to try and end that, to minimize as much suffering in this world as possible. 
I mean, the first thing you, anyone can do is to adopt a vegan lifestyle, um, which is a lifestyle that abstains from supporting any animal abuse industry, which means no meat, no dairy, no eggs, um, no company that profits from the exploitation of animals. That means avoiding product tested on animals, um, circuses, zoos, entertainment, the profits from it. Um, that's the first and foremost. But veganism really is just a neutrality. Um, it's, it, it can never be the ultimate solution. Um, it really does require that we get more involved. Getting involved um, depends on every person, on what they feel comfortable with, but I mean, if you want to get involved with Rescued, you can visit the website, um, and there's links on there to how you can get literature, um, how you can get our DVDs that you can distribute, um, and how you can help us do the work that we're doing. Um, but there's literally tens of thousands of animal protection, animal welfare, animal rights, and animal liberation groups around the world. Um, look into what local groups are doing. Find what feels right to you. Um, in Holland, there's a great organization, Respect for Data, um, that does a lot. They, if you're in Holland, they're one of the best organizations you can check out. Um, but again, you know, maybe even starting your own organization or starting your own group of people. Um, there's not necessarily a need to be an organization. Um, there's a lot that one person can do, and whether that means passing out leaflets, talking to people, um, going to schools, or taking more, you know, direct action means. Um, and the direct action can be anything. Um, really comes down to what each person feels in their heart. Again, what I ask anyone is, what would you honestly want someone to do for you? If you were being abused, if we put ourselves in the place of those who are being abused, it's pretty easy to figure out what we should do. I think that everything can, can make a difference. Um, I think it is a dangerous path to go down when we make people feel that it's okay or acceptable to eat meat. If we, there's a lot of people promoting organic and you know free range and humane meat. Um, and that is very misleading. It makes consumers think that, oh, well, I can eat the dead body of another animal um, as long as they were treated nicely. And that, to me, doesn't work. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to treat my friend really nicely and then slit their throat and think, oh, it's okay, just because I treated them nicely. That's, no, you know, killing is killing. Um, so I think there's a lot of danger in when an organization promotes, you know, free range or organic, the, the better. Um, of course those things are, those animals live better, but ultimately it's the same thing. They're still viewed as a product, they're still viewed as um, a commodity to be sold. Um, but as far as tactics that are used that are actually helping animals, um, I think it, everything helps. I think the foundation of this movement will always have to be, and in virtually every movement, it's going to have to be in education. Um, even if everybody started liberating animals tonight, it's not going to end animal agriculture. It's going to continue as long as people are consuming animals. And people aren't going to stop consuming animals until they know why they should stop consuming animals. Um, and that's why, you know, education is going to be a fundamental. Um, but really, any form of activism um, is, is going to benefit uh, the animals. Um, you explain beautifully why vegan uh, today. Could you just repeat that, uh, why you are vegan? Um, I mean, About I, the cow, you know, yeah. I, just, you know. I'm, I became vegan when I found out that all dairy cows have their babies taken away from them shortly after giving birth. Um, the thought to me that someone would, that we would take someone's baby away in order to have a product as needless as dairy was sickening to me. It's completely outrageous. Um, that's why I became vegan, um, and it's a real fundamental for why I promote veganism. It's there's a there's a real connection that a mother and child have throughout virtually every mammal species, um, and to break that for money is completely unacceptable. Um, you know, cows, like all mammals, produce milk for their babies. They don't produce it for us, um, and I mean, it literally has to be stolen from them. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the foundation of why I became vegan. Um, thank you so much for this interview. I really do appreciate the support. If people are looking for more information, please visit 
www.rescuedanimals.org um, and check out Extra Nature X on the internet for tour dates. Um, but really, it's no matter what movement you're involved in, step things up. Get more involved, um, dedicate more time, dedicate more energy, and dedicate more money if it's what's necessary.